Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to look at the new release of Blue Star Linux. In my opinion, one of the most underrated Arch distributions out there today. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Blue Star Linux. If you come over there on SourceForge, I'll make sure to put that link in the description below if you want more information. Blue Star Linux is an Arch Linux-based distribution built with an understanding that people want and need a solid operating system that provides a breadth of functionality and ease of use without sacrificing aesthetics. Basically what it is is it's not bloated, but it doesn't come bare either. It's got tools that most desktop users are going to need, which I find really handy. As a matter of fact, I've been daily driving this one on a backup laptop for about the last month. And now that it's updated, I installed the update. It's even better than it was before. And it can be installed permanently or you can use it as a live USB, however you want to do that. And you can come over here. There's their files right there. As you can see, the distro was updated on the 14th. So it's been less than five days since the new one was released. You've got support. Now, what they use as a support page is their actual Facebook page, which I will definitely link down below as well. And then you've got a discussion and a blog. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to close out of this and we're going to go to the desktop. Now, if you download Blue Star Linux, throw it on a USB or put it into a virtual machine and boot into it, this is the screen you're met with. Right off the bat, you can tell it's KDE desktop, but it's a little different. You've got a latte dock down here, and then up top, you've got a smaller panel right there, okay? And then over here, you've got your home folders right on your desktop, and you've got the Blue Star Linux installer right here, okay? First thing I'm going to do, because I have noticed lately, is that if you go up here and you drop the application menu down, sometimes it kind of gets drowned out by the background photo. That's the only knock I've got on it so far, so I'm going to go ahead and just change that background picture. I'm going to make it something a little darker. Let's just pick that and then close out of that, and then back up top. And now when you open it up, you can actually see everything pretty easily, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is right click. You can configure desktop and wallpaper. We done changed that. You can add widgets, add panel, show activity switcher, enter edit mode, lock screen, leave. Now, one thing up here, I'm not really a big fan of having my home folder right on the desktop. You might be, so if you do like that, it's great, you can leave it there. But if you want it gone, just right click on the home and then come down here and remove folder view and it's gone and that widget has been uninstalled. Then you have your clean desktop. All that's left is the Blue Star Linux installer. Now, if you come down to the dock, you do have show your desktop and then your workspaces, of course, desktop one, two, three, and four. And then you've got your file manager, which is Dolphin. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. If you open up Dolphin, I think it's got a beautiful aesthetic to it. I like the theme. I don't know what there is about it. It seems to have a hint of a, a green to it to me, but I could be wrong. Let me go ahead and maximize that so you can see. But I really do love the look. I love the way it's toned down a little bit up here. Not a lot of words. I love the font that's being used. It's easy to read. Okay. And if I want to go ahead and hide some of these, I can go ahead and hide that. And then right click and change my icon size. Make them a little larger, but I do love the theme, okay? You've got your usual suspects over here. Of course, you've got your home folders right here. But it's just a quick, fast file manager that makes getting your work done easy. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Back down to the bottom, and we've got console. Let's go ahead and open that up. Let's go ahead and maximize it. And it lets you know right here, it's Blue Star Linux. You're running kernel 5.15.7-arch1-1. So it's the Arch kernel. You've got KWIN, KDE, RAM at present with the console open. You're using about 929 megabytes out of the four gigs I have issued to this machine. And I want to see real quick if they have HTOP installed. Let's go ahead and check that out. And HTOP resource usage is matching up with what we're getting on the base up there. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Back down to the bottom. And you have GIMP out of the box. So let's open that up real quick. It pops right up, and that's a good image manipulation program if that's something you're into. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you do have VLC installed out of the box, LibreOffice Writer. Let's see what version. It should be the most up-to-date apps. 
That's what they're saying on their website, so let's double check. Okay, LibreOffice has open, so let's go ahead and close that and zip on up here and see what version we're running. We're running 7.2.4.1, so that is definitely the most recent version, so that's great. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then you do have FileZilla. You've got Thunderbird for your mail client. You've got Firefox, which we've already been into. And then you've got Pigeon Internet Messenger. And then your system settings. Let's go ahead and open that up. Let's go ahead and maximize that. And at present, we're using the dark theme. I'm going to leave that there. You can change your wallpaper right here. Clicking on files and folders opens them. This is set up for a single click. I'm going to go ahead and make it a double click because that's what I'm used to. And then over to the left, you have all the different settings that you can make adjustments to. If you click on appearance, first up is your global themes. If you notice, you get your base, breeze, breeze dark, and breeze twilight. And then you have a lot of Blue Star Linux themes out of the box, so you can use any of those. And you have oxygen. Now, if none of these themes are what you're looking for, of course, you can go down here and get new global themes. Open that up, select a theme that you like, and install it. You can do that with application style, plasma, colors, window decorations, fonts. If you want to change your fonts, all you got to do is click on those. To adjust all your fonts, you can come over here. If you wanted to change the actual font, you can click on it. Select a different font if you would like. I'm going to leave it alone, but I am going to change the size and bump it up to maybe 12. Go ahead and click apply. And as you can see, the fonts changed across the operating system. Then you've got icons, cursors, launch, feedback, font management, splash screen. And then you can go over here. You can change workspace, windows management, shortcuts, startup and shutdown, search. You've got notifications, users, regional settings, accessibility, applications, backups. I mean, really, online accounts, you can change pretty much anything you want to about this desktop environment. And then if you go over to About System, it gives you the same information you're going to get on your NeoFetch. KDE Plasma is 5.23.4, which is the most recent version of KDE. Kernel version we've already went over, and then shows you what processors and memory you're using. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the settings. Now, if you go up top over here to your right, you've got your hidden icons right here, which is your K organizer, your clipboard, night color control, and lock key status, sound, internet, most recent USB device, battery, volume, and then, of course, Octopi. Now, it's got the notifier on. Let's go ahead and click on that. And it lets you know over here, confirm, there are 139 packages that need to be retrieved, a total of 585 megabytes, and you would need to go install these. Now, with an Arch system, especially with Octopi, if you're in VirtualBox and you come over here and you click, no, you don't want to install those because you're in a VirtualBox, if you go up and try to go into Octopi, it's not going to let you because you have to install those updates first. So see, it closes down. So you're going to need to install those updates, especially if you're running this on a USB or virtual box. That's not an issue. You'd have to update it before you could go into Octopi. Then you've got English. And then, of course, your notifications. If you click on that, it lets you know there are 139 updates available. So I'm going to close out of that. Arrow back up. You've got your calculator here. And then, of course... You've got your system load right here. It lets you know about RAM and your CPU usage. So let's go ahead and click on this. You've got recent applications, recent files, development. Like I said, this comes with tools out of the box. It's not bloated, but it's prepped and ready for you to get to work. You've got translation. You've got Cuttlefish, JEdit, QT Assistant, Education. You've got Mathematics, LibreOffice Math, Games. You've got some card games, Graphics. Digicam, GIMP, GwynView, KPhoto, LibreOffice Draw, Ocular, Internet, you've got FileZilla, Firefox, KGit, Conqueror, KTorrent for your torrent files, Thunderbird, Skype, Multimedia, Amarok, Dragon Player, VLC Media Player, Office, Calibre, Contact, K Organizer, LibreOffice Suite, Settings, Ice-T Web Control Panel. Now in here, this is a control panel for setting deployments and the properties of those deployments. The use of multiple JREs is currently limited to open JDK. You can go in here, you can set cache for your Java stores, certificates, debugging, desktop integration, JVM settings, network security, policy settings right here, and extended applet security. 
But if this is something that is a good tool for you, once you download it, put it on a USB, play around with it a little bit, and just see how powerful it truly is. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Okay, over to system. Down here, you've got Blue Star Linux installer, Dolphin, HTOP, Info Center, Console, Manage Printing, Octopi, Pac-Man Log Viewer, Terminal, UX Term, Utilities, Arc, HP Device Manager, Kalu. If you open up Kalu, right here, it just tells you there's unread news through Kalu from Arch, sorting out old password hashes, move official IRC channels to LibreChat. It just gives you the news, okay? And you can click on Show News, and it'll bring this up over here. Then you can mark it as red. And then if you go up top, it'll give you updates. 1,450 packages not found in the AUR. It'll tell you what you need to do there to get things handled with the AUR. And then you can close out of that, and then you can go read them anytime you want to. So let's go ahead and come back down. You've got Kate, KDocker, Cleopatra, KMouse, Spectacle, Lost and Found, Blue Star Linux Installer, Help, Please Donate, Power Session. And that's pretty much it. Well, everybody, that was a quick look at Blue Star Linux. Probably one of the most underrated Arch distributions out there today. It's powerful. It's beautiful. And in some situations, when I run it on an older laptop, it's faster than my Manjaro install on my daily driver. More than likely, this is the one I'm going to be taking the jump to and switching to as my daily driver. Tell me what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow the channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.